different is what what a person who's interested in really achieving um, extreme muscle enhancement, yeah. how different is their daily protocol from, say, somebody who's just taken vitamins to yeah. remain healthy? Well, if they're, if they're really pursuing extreme muscle enhancement, then they're going to be training with, uh, with frequency and with intensity. And be, that, 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 that alone sets up the need for more frequent feedings. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to have more frequent feedings, you're going to have to feed yourself more frequently, then certainly you start to rely on things like protein shakes to break up the... Uh, you don't want, you know, we know you don't want to take, take in too much food uh, in the course of the day. All that solid food to you know, gain all that bulk, you'll gain bulk, but you'll mm -hmm. gain some fat too. So now we know to divide it up with some protein shakes and other things like that. The bodybuilder, the, the, the person pursuing extreme muscle, will have a greater need for the essential fats. Um, th it's, it's kind of the same thing, but they just need more of it. Yeah. What about, uh, say, the high protein versus the old f yeah. you know, food pyramid that used yeah. to exist? Oh, How does yeah. that pertain to, well, to... The food pyramid is just a mess. I mean, we know now, uh, looking back, and these are the, some of the things that we still saw the, 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 the vestiges of this bad advice in Shaq's Big Challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw how this, this promotion of what healthy diet is all about, that somehow, you know, the base of the food pyramid, which, 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 which recommends literally no less than 11 servings of carbohydrates a day. 11. I mean, this is, yeah. it's the way to get diabetes. Yeah. And, you know? But this is, yeah, it's, it's I want to talk about that when we come back as well, because there is yeah. so much of that we're seeing in children nowadays. And I want to talk about, and double back and talk about some of the, uh, some of the problems we're seeing with, with the, the steroid abuse and, and the headlines that have been generated as well, and how those who want to achieve this kind of success can do it without those kind of problems. We'll be right back in a moment. Don't go away. Back once again. Welcome back, Dr. Uh, Carlin Coker is our guest, uh, author of Extreme Muscle Enhancement, also from uh, TV Shack's Big Challenge. Uh, the the steroid headlines that were generated by the professional wrestler, uh, mm -hmm. we now see that also there might have been some, I guess, what they call concussion syndrome involved there as well. But is it is it a foregone conclusion that athletes that anybody who takes high levels of uh, anabolic steroids for long periods of time is is going to end up suffering psychological problems well look i think that anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drug abuse does not cause frank psychosis um, in that particular case that was a case of somebody that was t in, in my opinion you know very troubled um, i don't think um, these performance enhancing drugs are going to bring out psychotic behavior in somebody or cause psychotic behavior. Um, again, short fuse, if you're taking a lot of testosterone, I've seen it, you right. know. The roid um, rage is what know, it's commonly referred it's to. It's commonly yeah. referred to as roid rage, but, you know, it, again, a, I, I view psychosis as sort of a deficiency of reality mm -hmm. testing. You're really doing things that are way, way, way right. over the top. So it's a combination, though, a, a person predisposed towards those perhaps. sort of problems. And, psych and, and, and psychiatric problems, yeah. something like that. It, it, perhaps that would be, you know, you know play into that. Yep. But, um, you know, I don't think it's, you're destined to have psychological problems or else we're, we're going to see an awful lot of athletes go absolutely bonkers. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me about how young you've seen people start training as bodybuilders and, and as a physician. Do you think there's a, like a, a minimum age beneath which they should not be going down this road just yet? Well, I think, and I think you saw that in Shaq's big challenge. I think exercise, you can do. I mean, uh, my five-year-old, gosh, he gave me like uh, 30 sit-ups this morning. I was really proud of him. Okay, so I think Where at any go? age, you know, no matter how young, you can do little bits of exercise. But if you're really going to get into stacking the weights on and using a barbell and, you know, we, we call axial weight bearing, doing a squat or a deadlift or training heavy like that, you know, you really want to be past your teen years, you know, to, before you really start doing that, or at least mm -hmm. in your late teen years, because you can, you, you can stunt growth a little bit. You know, my uncles were all over six feet, so I, I ended up at 5'10". Maybe I... Maybe I you know, should have should have waited a little bit. It's all right. It's, you know, I, I, you mentioned Arnold being six two before, and I had met him years ago when I was working another place, and he was doing a, a TV appearance there, and and I'm about the same height, and I was amazed because because of his size, I expected a guy was like six five or something like yeah. that. So you guys built the way you are, play taller. Trust me, you play taller. <laughs> uh, the the diabetes thing. Yeah. We, I want to talk a little bit sure. more about that as well. Does does this level of exercise add a degree of protection uh, against 
yeah. diabetes and other conditions as well. Yeah. We want to go back to the uh, exercise and the diet elements that are in extreme muscle enhancement because, again, the cradle, it all comes from bodybuilding, and we want to know about the drug abuse so that we can educate our kids and dissuade them from using anabolic steroids, but at the same time, we want to provide them with the tools, which means the exercise and the diet, the way to go about it. Now, that exercise and diet is absolutely protective against something like diabetes and a number of other illnesses as well. But remember, you know, we are, we are in a crisis situation in this country, and every big business should be interested in this, uh, in this, in this idea, in these concepts, because, you know, um, we used to have something called type 1 and type 2 diabetes or, yeah. uh, you know, juvenile, juvenile onset, onset and yeah. adult onset. And uh, your wife is a pediatrician, so, you know, yeah. she'll uh, fill you we, in on all these details. This, sure. We see this in the audience, well, well, in, in now, the practice right now, exactly. where people are coming exactly. in with those so labels young, obsolete. Exactly. Well, those terms are obsolete yeah. because now kids are, they're so exposed to things like high fructose corn syrup and things like that. Yeah. They're getting that. It's so accessible. Packaged foods, high sugar, 11 servings of, yeah. of carbohydrates at the base of the food pyramid. Yeah. You know, what we're doing is we're causing diabetes in kids that are so young, a type 2 diabetes yep. in kids that are so young that we can't, it doesn't even make sense to differentiate. Is it insulin dependent? Is it not insulin dependent? Is it a juvenile onset or adult onset? Is it type 1 or type 2? It doesn't matter. The point is, is it's diabetes, and that's yeah. what we're seeing. And so we've got to make an effort on a number of different fronts to move away from this and in a direction of wellness, health, and wellness. And every company, every major corporation should be interested in saying, what can, what, what can we do to, to feed into a, a healthier model? Well, as a, as a physician and a businessman, yeah. as a result, you see the strains that are being put on this society by trying to pay for the health care and yeah. the projections that are out there. Sure. For, uh, for the leading edge of oh, the baby boom, they're gonna, and, and what follows? Mike, they're going to get a lot worse. Do you realize that this is the first generation that is expected to not outlive the previous generation? I mean, how can that be? It's, oh, we, we've always had a, a greater longevity, and now, you know, we're, the, the brakes are starting to get tapped because we're paying for it, and what mm -hmm. we're paying for is our mistakes, our, our, our attention towards profit and bottom line as opposed to wellness and health, yeah. you know, and, you know, and, and, and the, the well paradox the as well. Because you see kids are sitting at home watching yeah. too much of the tube right. or, or in front of another screen, you know, right. be it the video game screen or the computer screen. And then you see a gym yeah. on every corner. Yeah. And so it's like a dichotomy in the society yeah. between those who are really right. dedicated right. to working out and those who well, just you know what? never get outside the, the, the television room. Mike, we, ha we live in a world right now of shortcuts. It's fast-paced. Everybody wants to get there. And that's the nature of a lot of the drug abuse that we see, the performance-enhancing drug abuse mm -hmm. is the shortcut. And everybody wants to run and get that. They don't want to put in the diet, the training, you know, the mm -hmm. things that they have to do, the Are hardcore you, But do you sweat. think with all the testing that, yeah. that is supposedly going on right, right now, with the headlines, with the careers that have been damaged, yeah. the PR damage yeah. that has been done, you know, the Bonds record for home right. runs now being... Uh, observed and Correct. then cast aside that quickly. Yeah. Do you think that perhaps pro athletes also have said, all right, I got to find another way okay. to get where I want to go? Perhaps, but you know, the way I look at it is this, Mike, an asterisk by anybody's name never changed a child's behavior, mm -hmm. okay? So to me, I think the emphasis is on the wrong place. Sure, you want to have a drug standard, you know, the, you know a drug testing standards in, in, in professional sports. Absolutely, you want to have a banned substance list. But you know what? If we're really interested in the well-being of our children, let's mm -hmm. test the college athletes. Let's test the high school athletes. Let's also educate them, like I do in the book, Extreme Muscle yeah. Enhancement, and educate them and show them the truth. Just tell them the truth. You want to dance? You want, this is what you're going to do. You're going to pay the piper. And when we educate them and we we test them, we hold them to a standard, and we make them smarter so that when they get out there, they're less apt to make those same mistakes. But instead, what do we do? We ignore the youth, and we try to set examples by putting asterisks by players' names. It's silly to me. And, and you're saying basically by following these protocols, you can get there without having to go down that other road. A a absolutely. Absolutely. You can, get, you, you can get such a remarkable physique, and you'll get a healthy physique, and you'll get all the benefits of what we know in, a, a, at about bodybuilding and we know how to train and we know how to diet and we know how to do it right we know how to take natural dietary supplements and get and get a natural edge and that to me is what I'm talking about and we also know what performance enhancing drug abuse is going to do all right well you've inspired me let's go for a run appreciate it uh, Thanks, Dr. Man. Carlin Coker the book is extreme muscle enhancement read it and then go out and do something with it amen we'll be right back